Bowl volumes. What's the right size bowl for your setup? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, we had some questions about bowls and bowl shapes uh, in our 2J comments and saying there was some contradictions as far as, um, I think it was Dave, from what Dave says at um, Head Games, I think, and Darren Morgan. And I just wanted to explain that, that there's not really any contradiction. We need to look at what each type of, um, what each guy is doing. So when Darren talks about bowl volumes like 105, 115, 105, 100%, um, what he's talking about is two valve heads that need to compensate for the short turn or, or a dedicated drag race engine. And, and this is where you'll see a difference, even in the same cylinder head. So we take 23 degrees, for example, it has an 80 degree roughly, I don't know what the exact um, change is in the short turn. Um, the idea of bigger bowls in these is to store energy and have more dense mass from our wave tuning, which works really, really well in drag racing where we can optimize that wave tuning. Uh, and the idea is to have a denser volume and a greater volume in the bowl. But that doesn't sort of work in twin cams or even when we go to a decent cylinder head, uh, some of the later cylinder heads. Uh, and it doesn't work when we move away from limited RPM type stuff. So, you know, dirt racing, you, you'll find they won't want as big a bowling because they want, they want response. They're not looking for peak numbers. So this is where I really, really struggle with these rules because they get interpreted wrong and people try and cross over and use that rule somewhere else. Darren is 100% right with what he does and Dave is 100% right with what he does. They're, they're two, separate, uh, two separate styles of racing, two, set, two different types of cylinder. Even the difference between two different designs of 23 degree, depending on um, where the valve is, if they've moved it to bore center or whatever, uh, and how the bowl shape goes from the far side to the, our expansion side can change how much vo bowl volume we want to put in that and how well that cylinder head's going to work. So again, this is why I don't like those hard and fast rules uh, around, you know, your bowl needs to be 105 or this or that. Uh, and in twin cams, we definitely don't want big bowl um, bowls in them because all they're doing is killing that inertia for us. We, we want to optimize that. So a twin cam port that's more designed like this with an 88 throat, we probably pr pretty much want to mimic that seat diameter into the bowl. We don't want the bowl any bigger than it needs to be. We want to morph the shape for the short turn depending on how severe the short turn is. More modern heads don't really have a short turn so you'll find they're almost parallel through there or uh, a, a slight growth towards the window. Again, depending on the design of the port OEM, you might find they'll shrink to the window um, and then expand in the intake or have a real long parallel intake. So again, this is not you know, optimal for racing. So we need to look at that as well. We can't look at an OEM head and go, well, that's right, but it's right for emissions or it's right for a wide power band or um, this is where we need to really understand what we're dealing with and what we're building it for. Uh, and this is why you'll find guys in circuit racing are looking more at average numbers and guys in drag racing are looking more at that uh, peak area, that last 1,000, 1,500 RPM and how they continue on uh, past their red line as well, uh, where in, in, a, in a circuit car or a dirt car or something that needs a little bit more um, duration as far as rpm goes maybe three three and a half thousand rpm window they're gonna the bowls the ports even on the same style head it's going to be very very different so and another point that come up is bowl shape round we we don't always want a round bowl uh and you'll get into this once you start talking about offset uh seats and stuff like that which some people get into uh, especially in circuit racing um because the short side we want to tend to flatten. So we actually end up more of a D-shape 
uh, in that area than, than round. Uh, and if we look at the modern heads, we're doing an Audi at the moment, I might show you that. The, the roof actually comes into the seat uh, on an angle. So th there's no roundness uh, in that bowl at all. Uh, so the, the roof is very flat and the sides sort of radius off it. Um, you, you can put a bowl in them, but they, they tend to not work as well. Um, we talked about this with the Lamborghini cylinder head. DFI complicate, complicates the situation. So this is why you've got to look at the whole picture to understand what's actually happening in the cylinder head. So, but yeah, generally the less short term we have, the less bowl we need because we don't need to compensate for the lag of the short term. Because remember, that's going to be your restriction. That's going to be a separation. So the idea of having big bowls in really, really poor uh, short term cylinder heads like 23 degree Cleveland's, all that sort of stuff is to compensate for the port. But the, the better we get the shape of the port, the higher it comes up, the better the shot, the, the less expansion we need, the more direct, the more inertia we can carry, you'll find the better the CSA will be, the more consistent it will be. You don't need to put big bowls in them. You don't need to compensate for a bad port. So you've got to look at the whole picture, the architecture of the cylinder head, what we're trying to accomplish, what it's for, and, and what design uh, limitations do we need to compensate for. So in the 2J uh, porting series, we are just keeping it really, really basic, trying to keep it on the smaller side. Most people port too big in the twin cam game. They're already very, very big in most things like the 26s and stuff like that. And, and you see it with people just accentuating um, injector areas and stuff like that. And, and they're absolutely killing the velocity gradient in that port. I, I, I tell this to a lot of people, get some plasticine and fill that whole injector area up. Don't include it when you test and try and limit how much area you put into that injector, especially with modern injectors. They do not need it. Uh, and you look at anything decent now, all they are is a tiny little hole in the manifold and the pin tool is just up inside that hole. We don't want to add area because all it does is create loss. All it does is rob from the port itself. So these are things we need to look at. Make sure you're understanding what the person you're following is talking about, especially if they're talking about hard and fast rules in a specific area like pro stock or any of your top high RPM drag racing NA engines, because that's really, really different to uh, even engine masters where they tend to size things a little bigger. Or if you look at circuit cars where they tend to size things on the smaller side or, or pro stock versus super stock, they're, they're, they're all different. So what works in super stock versus pro stock are different. So we need to look at those things, same as valve areas. Uh, you know, your 90, 93.5% valve area in a two valve isn't going to cut it in a four valve. 90% um, is sort of it, 91, 91, 2 maybe, like uh, as far as um, throat ratio goes. So, and then valve area, you know, your 53% in, in a two valve versus four valve stuff. Again, I don't really like to use those because there's, again, so many other compounding factors in the induction system that is going to influence the valve size, like undersquare balls. We talked about this uh, with Dave at Skunk2 Racing when we did a podcast with them. So some engines, while you can say an engine needs X amount of valve area, at what stroke the, the, these are the things we've got to look at. If, it, if it's under square versus over square, that's going to change how much CFM demand that cylinder head is going to have to supply. And that changes the whole game. It changes the whole approach to how we're going to design a cylinder head, if we're designing one, or how we're even going to go about porting it, where the MCA is going to be. Uh, on um, under square engines, that generally the valve seat ring will be our minimal cross-sectional area. So the bowl's only gonna grow slightly and the whole runner's gonna grow, um, but you, you're not gonna see a, a dramatic difference. Nothing like uh, 100, 105% of the valve head, that, that's massive. That's, again, more two valve stuff and more narrow window RPM stuff where we can charge that mass to help when the valve opens on overlap, 
we can push that gas out and get really, really good VEs that way in, in that specific zone. So again, look at the whole picture and understand what each guy that you follow is actually talking about. So um, I think we had a, another comment about um, bowl shape. Um, again, that'll come down to the CSA. So the, the size and the shape is dictated by where the short turn is, how high the short turn is, um, to how well that bowl's going to flow. As I said, I, I might do some pictures and a, a little bit on this Audi head we're doing now, uh, just, just to show you uh, how different these bowls are compared to, say, a 2J or even some of the modern uh, BMW um, Volkswagen, I think it is. Who, what else does it overlap with? There's a few engine codes there that overlap. They're the same cylinder head. Um, again, they're, they're DFI, but the port shape is very, very different to something you'd see in an RB, 2J or, or something from the 90s that was all wet flow. So these are um, generally dual flow or DFI. So the, the Audi's both. Um, uh, the one we're doing at the moment is going to be a deletion of the direct injector, so it'll be straight wet. Um, they also have the uh, breaker plates in there as well, so we might talk about that as well. But yeah, guys, be really careful um, how you take the information in and, and, and use that for your project because some guys talking about specific rules are for specific type of racing and, and there's all variations depending on what type of racing you're into so when we talk about restricted class we might actually shrink valves if we're allowed to um, and, and put smaller seat smaller valves in smaller seats smaller throats we might be 86 85 on, on the throat so again it comes down to what you're actually doing with that so you got to look at the whole picture when we talk about this sort of stuff anyway hopefully that helps guys i'll get you on the next one cheers